between members of both the ranks? Oh, that's live. Audio is live? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we can't talk about people dying because the audio is live. <laughs> and we're still, amazingly, on YouTube and Facebook. So if you're watching this and listening to this, you're um, seeing a blank screen that starts in about two minutes. So I give instructions on, to everyone here that the first half hour is going to be um, censored by me because we can't mention any injectables that may be forced on the public or any effects of that, but that's in the second half. But since there's a bunch of forced medical procedures without informed consent that are negatively affecting blood, um, that's what we're talking about today, kind of, because I can't really say that. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, doesn't it sound appetizing? Spleen, liver, and kidney. Okay, with onions and garlic. No, 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 this is, this is how. <laughs> hey, and, uh, with fa yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay, okay, but you know, it, my mom used to make liver, and, and it's actually, organ meats are highly nutritious for you as long as they're from a healthy animal. But to learn what they are and what they do is really, really important, particularly on blood stuff. But I can't go until Joe says so. He's power crazed, little Brazilian back there. He has all the power. He can shut me off or. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Don't piss off the guy with the camera. <laughs> if I heard that once, I've heard it a thousand times. Rolling it. It's old. We're live? Welcome to True Health Tuesday, and the truth will set you free. Okay, tonight, okay, now now think about naming a health talk. Spleen, liver, and kidney, the source of health. Okay, the reason I'm bringing this up is because there's a lot of conditions that are happening now that are negatively affecting the spleen, liver, and kidney, but also blood health. So we got to get into this. But I like Theodore Roosevelt because... If you're, if you're wondering if there's going to be change over the next couple of years, the last couple of years that we've had, it's been insane. Can't be upset with change because it's always going to be there. There can be no life without change, and to be afraid of what is different or unfamiliar is to be afraid of life. Yeah, life is still going to go on, the planet's going to go on, we're going to go on. Okay, society will make it. Now, the apprenticeship program, it's the last Thursday every month. And we're going to actually cover the same topic, but in phenomenal detail Thursday. <clears throat> but that's on the Dr. BVIP. We're also on BitChute, Odyssey, Rumble, everything. And those that are supporting the Dr. BVIP, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I mean, it's, we've been demonetized, shadow banned, everything, and you guys are really helping. And Extreme Health Academy. I did a two and a half hour, two hour webinar a couple of weeks ago, and this is just a great group. I think Bergman 14, it's at the bottom of this video. You can still get in there for two weeks for no charge. <clears throat> so let's look at this. Okay, now when we're looking at this, this, this structure, and this is all the organs, and all this stuff is underneath the diaphragm. You've got the spleen. Now the spleen is lymph tissue. It's way over in the side on the left-hand side behind the stomach, okay? And the kidney is right close to it too. Now, <clears throat> and this is why, it's, it's close to the back, so any back impact or fall or something like that on the left side can damage the spleen because it's super vascularized. Now, every red blood cell that goes through that spleen, it has a certain function. So it's gonna check to see the viability of it. So in blood disorders, that spleen gets larger and larger and larger. It's kind of like um, uteruses are this big and they grow up to this big to hold a kid. Okay, so, so it's going to grow and shrink as it's needed. Now, all this stuff, and I want you to look at, at that liver. The liver is the massive factory of the body. Now, all the intestinal tract, and this is hugely important, this is how you get your nutrients. So anything you put in your mouth 
And you've got to figure you got three things you're working with, protein, fats, and carbohydrates. Carbohydrate digestion begins in the mouth, and it goes down into the esophagus, into the stomach. And this is where there's a boatload of acid. Okay, and the stomach breaks down the proteins, so the amino acids to proteins. That's why when someone's in a stressed state, they produce less stomach acid, so we recommend juicing, blending, things like that, so pre-digest it. Now, once it leaves the stomach, it goes into this C-shaped thing called the duodenum. And you can kind of see it right underneath that purple thing there. The head of the pancreas goes right into that. Now, the, the gallbladder, which drains off of the liver, drains to the same hole as that pancreas. It's called the ampulla vater. And the way I used to is explain it, these two guys go into the amphitheater of vater. Okay, so, you know, when you're teaching this stuff to remember it, okay, it's better to look at the entire function of this. Now, that food, when it leaves the duodenum, you've got the gallbladder there, so the gallbladder contracts and it lets out all of this bile that breaks down the nutrients and then has that food goes down through the intestinal tract. And we're talking, it goes through the jejunum, which is a small intestine, the ileum, which is a small intestine, the, the large intestine, the colon, okay? And it pushes this wave through. Well, those nutrients based on the acidity and, and the area they're in are gonna have certain absorption. And this is why when someone's in a chronic state of stress, we recommend whole food supplements because if they have a protein covering and you're in a stress state, you're not having enough stomach acid, then those pills, we'll actually see them on x-ray. We'll say, wow, you got a couple of pills that ain't digested there. You know, so, so but, but look at this. All that nutrients go through the wall of the intestinal tract, through the wall. Now, this is the apple, this is the banana, this is the, the Tylenol, this is the Advil, this is the um, Advair, this is the, the, you know, every medication and chemical that you put in your system has to go through this system, through the wall of the intestinal tract into that portal system. Now the portal system, even the spleen drains into the portal system and it all drains into this liver, which is the giant enzyme factory, okay? And, and this is why you can see anything that toxifies the blood, anything that you're putting in your mouth that can have a negative response, okay, that, that you know, let's say you're taking, oh, I don't know, pick a, pick a common chemical, okay? You're right, Advil, okay, Motrin, Aleve, okay, a non anti-inflammatory. Now, this is a chemical that damages the kidneys. Why? Because it gets in your mouth, through the intestinal tract, into the liver. The liver drains into the inferior vena cava. Then this goes to the heart. Then the heart pumps it out to the lungs. Then the lungs um, pump it back after it's oxygenated to the heart. Then the heart pumps it out to the body. Wait a second. I'm talking about an Advil, Motrin, or a leave. It has to go through that process. What would you take it for? Oh, joint pain. Oh, you're right, it destroys joint cartilage and it damages the kidneys, okay? It can damage the liver, like Tylenol's the leading cause. Can you see how crazy it is? If you're in a society that, that values treating symptoms with a chemical, this system is at great risk, okay? Plus, if you have a society that's not utilizing food the way food is has been used for millennia, like let's say it's packaged, processed, preserved. You remove the metabolic or digestive enzymes. That's still, that crap has got to go through this, okay? In order to become CRAP. <laughs> okay, so, so let's just break it down. What does the spleen do? It's a, it's a blood filter, okay? And the reason I'm talking about this is because we're going to talk about the health of the blood. Okay, so it's a blood filter. So if there's any blood toxicities or blood issues, that spleen gets larger. And I've seen spleens as large as a football, and I've seen them as large as, as less than a fist. Now, um, it, uh, it carries, um, it affects the number of red blood cells. Breaking down and removing abnormal old damaged red blood cells. And that's the key because, now think of this, so it looks at each red blood cell, and the red blood cells only last 120 days. So it's choosing which ones are viable and which ones aren't. And so that drain, remember that picture? 
that spleen drains into the portal vein that drains into the liver. Okay, and so none of these blood proteins are lost. They're always reutilized to be broken down into bile so they can break up fats. I mean, just such an efficient system. It's incredible. It also is vital to the immune system and it produces lymphocytes. Now, if you've had the spleen removed, and this I've had probably a few hundred patients, you know, martial arts, motorcycle accidents, I mean, a bunch of stuff where the spleen was removed. Uh, the problem is, okay, now the, the arteries and veins are still connected. They're still going into that portal cable system, but it's not really going to be efficient and you're missing a blood filter. So what happens? Your immune system's weaker, okay? And when I say immune system, it's not, it's not like a system that actually exists. It's really your body's response to pathogens or challenges in the environment. So if you had the spleen removed, you're looking at increased infections, septicemia, blood infections, um, serious infections over one to 10 years. So if you've had the spleen removed, is taking care of your immune system important? Duh, and if you, if you still have your spleen, is taking care of your immune system important? So what, what that means is anything you do that helps your response to environmental pathogens that helps you is good. Anything that weakens that is Bad. Oh, thank you. God, the, God, am I going too fast? Okay. No, because, I mean, you got to look at, at we're living in an insane society. This, I call it the enzyme factory. Oh, and one thing, and, and I think this, I'm the only person in the world that this really bugs. Okay, but that inferior vena cava that goes up the outside, backside of the liver, um, they, they label it as portal vein. That's actually the... Um, uh, inferior vena cava, okay? It's, it's not the portal vein. Does, does, does that irritate only me? Okay, okay, well, it was mismarked, and, but it was a cool picture, so I had to use it. <laughs> okay, so it filters and processes the blood. All the nutrients, every nutrient that you have goes through this system. There's a redundant system called the portal cable system, so if any of these veins get blocked, um, it has a secondary drain will dump, dump that nutrient-rich blood into the regular venous system. So, so it, it's, nothing's ever going to get really broken down or lost. Removes toxins. So that means if you're taking toxins, guess what's affected? The liver. Okay. Um, it produces cholesterol. How important is cholesterol? Well, your brain is 50% cholesterol. Virtually every hormone you make is made out of cholesterol. Cholesterol is the most important aspect of your body. Without that, you die. Okay, now the liver and gallbladder, the liver produces bile. Where does it get the bile? It gets it from the red blood cells passed over by the spleen. And it also produces bile from all the other things that are going in, the red blood cells, okay, that are going in there. So, so the liver is a bile producing machine. Now, if you've had the gallbladder, because the gallbladder stores and concentrates bile, and when there's presence of fat in that round little C-shaped duodenum, then the gallbladder contracts and in, in, in emulsify those fats. So what if you've had the gallbladder removed? Well, if you've had the gallbladder removed, you're always dripping that bile. Because, the, the, I mean, there's a byproduct of the processes of the liver. So you can develop to widen all ulcers. So this means you've got to take a little bit of fat with every meal. So it's always being emulsified. Plus, you're going to have fat deficiency. This is why... Um, nails, hair, skin, hormone production, it's bad if you've had the gallbladder removed. But the gallstones that are, that are formed in there form only from stress. And what's a trip is, I mean, I had like, like a little jar of gallstones because we were moving, you know, doing human dissection and, you know, you'd find some really cool stones. They're big, they can be big, and they're super light. They're amazing. It, it feels almost like styrofoam. But when you slice into them, the crystal formation, it's literally stress hormones. Adrenaline, cortisol, epinephrine, things like that. So the higher the stress, the more that, that, that the blood goes through, and then it stores and concentrates that bile, and those, those stress hormones can actually form a, slitted, a solid issue. We also feel that when we're doing a soft tissue adjustment, we'll feel bile sludge. Okay, and this is in people with extreme stress, and we'll, we'll work that sludge out to help the person. Now, the bile, again, product of red blood cells, 
um, emulsifies the fats, but vitamin A, D, E, K, I mean, all important stuff for lung function, for immune system, for, for energy, for clotting, everything. It comes out of those fats. Now, the kidneys, again, another blood filter, okay? And so we're looking at the, the spleen, the liver, which is an enzyme factory and a blood filter, and we're looking at the blood, okay, or the kidneys, also as a blood filter. Now, now, anytime you have low oxygen, oh, I don't know, maybe self-induced, okay? So you have low oxygen. I'm not suggesting anything. <laughs> but that's going to stimulate the erythropoietin production so your body can make more red blood cells, okay? So, you know, it's a good system. Now, the kidneys, the functional unit's called the nephron, where it goes down to this little loop. And who invent, who discovered the loop? Henley. Henley. I know, I know. Isn't that something? That's stuff we never forget, Doc. Okay? It's called the loop of Henley. Okay? Yeah, Grant discovered it. No. Henley probably discovered it. Okay? But it goes down to one cell thick. Okay? And a lot of drugs work on this level. So if you have healthy blood, and you figure the kidneys are the size of your fist, so you, every, every 20 minutes, six quarts of blood got to go through there, okay? So if there's any damage to the kidneys, you still got to get the six quarts of blood through. So what has to happen to blood pressure if you have any kidney damage? It has to go up. So anything that damages the kidneys is going to elevate the blood pressure. Anything that thickens the blood is going to damage the kidneys. Okay, anything that increases blood viscosity can damage the kidneys. Um, and in fact, most medications okay, um, like diuretics, they call them water pills. And if you're curious, pills, uh, water doesn't come in a pill form, it actually comes in a glass. <laughs> yeah, it's called a diuretic, it damages the kidneys, okay? So, so anything that damages that nephron can damage the kidney. So if you have less surface area, the body's gonna adapt with high blood pressure. So what kind of toxins are you exposed to? Well, I mean, prescription drugs. We know, you know, leading cause of kidney disease, it's gonna be aspirin, leading cause of liver disease, it's Tylenol. So if you're living in a society that utilizes petrochemicals or chemicals in order to alter your physiology, welcome to our world. It's insane. Amalgam dental fillings. Okay, I actually had a patient a few years ago, a husband and wife dentist team, and he looked 80, 90 years old, but not a good healthy. I've got patients in their 90s that come in here and you think, damn. Okay, you know, built, strong, healthy, tan, you know, coming in from their, you know, pickleball class, going into, you know, riding their surfboard. And it's like, man, this guy, I mean, shaky, old, everything. He was doing the old amalgam fillings. They were heating them up, making them. And his wife was the assistant. It's horrible. But if you have those, we identify the toxins on the thermography. And you'll actually see the lymph drainage for this area drains to the right chest. Pesticides. Let's say you're eating food that's non-organic bread that's been spayed, sprayed with glyphosates, okay? That's an, a mineral chelator, which means you can't utilize vitamins. It's a natural antibiotic, which destroys the gut flora. And just think of the intestinal tract picture that you just saw. You're destroying the gut flora and they're damaging that, so that's gonna damage the absorption. Synthetic food products. I can't say the word, but it begins with a V and it's an injectable, Vensard, we'll call it. Um, those can damage. Um, that, or they are toxins. Predatory and farm-raised fish and toxic environmental stimulus. So, wait, toxic environmental stimulus. Okay, and I, I love the Theodore Roosevelt quote, do what you can with what you have where you are. Can you imagine him saying this? Probably Spanish-American War, you know, bombs going off everywhere. He had very few men. He was losing. Okay, yeah, it just, I, I like real guys like that psychological stress on serum lipid levels. Oh my gosh. So let's say you, you're getting your news from the number one propaganda system that we have in America, okay? CBS, CBS NBC, ABC, okay? Total government propaganda. Did, was anybody alive in the 70s and remember Pravda? 
Okay, good. Yes. We have good harvest this year. Of course, the shelf empty, but you don't see empty shelves. We have good harvest. You know, you know, and they would lie consistently, and that's what our government's doing. But if you're watching that, or you're watching, you know, last couple of years, the ticker tape on the bottom, they're not talking about heart disease, cancer, or anything else, just ticker tape. Mental stress elicits hemoconcentration with associated increase in serum lipid concentrations, hemostatic, and blood viscosity. This is an intelligent response. It means the, the blood lipid levels, cholesterol levels go up and the blood becomes more viscous under a stress state. This is normal because you need hormones, you need fat in order to produce the stress hormones in order to survive a stress response. A third of Americans are going to develop a blood issue called diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is not a disease. Type 2 diabetes is a blood poisoning. This is why anytime we get someone with type 2 diabetes, I say, wow, do you check your blood sugar? Yes, I do every day. Okay, cool. Well, in about a week, you're going to find it too low. Okay, so you need to check it and talk with a doctor. And I've had so many patients say, you know, this diet you have me on is different than my doctor who's managing it. I said, yeah, I don't want to manage it. I just want to fix it. You know, <laughs> in a month, you won't have it. It's really easy. So one third will develop diabetes in America. That's over 100 million people. 95% are type two, that's a blood poisoning. Now, if you treat a blood poisoning, okay, with a chemical, because remember, this is a poisoning. So what's gonna happen if, if, if you're poisoned? Is your heart rate gonna go up or down? It's gotta go up, okay. If your blood is unhealthy, it's loaded with, with, with crap, okay, where you have, and it's called insulin resistant, where that glucose can't get out of the bloodstream into the cells, that's type two diabetes. So the blood becomes thick. What has to happen to blood pressure? It has to go up, okay? So what happens to happen to cholesterol? It's gonna go up too. So, so you get these people taking high blood pressure, cholesterol, and metformin, or type two diabetes drugs, and these are all stress responses. So when somebody comes into the office, I don't say, wow, you have hypertension, type two diabetes, and this. I said, no, man, you, don't, you just got a stress response. So we got to address the stressors, not, a, not address your adaptation to the stress. Now, let's say you had, you had a group of animals that 10% of them are going to have a liver disease. Do you think they need a shot, a pill, a drug, or find out what the hell they're eating? what they're eating. Okay, yeah, they're probably licking the oil pipes up in Alaska or something, okay? You know, if they're caribou. No, I mean, look at this. So what are we doing? Everything you put in your mouth has to be filtered through the intestinal tract, okay? Anything that you can digest into this portal system, into the liver. So the liver is highly vulnerable to environmental toxins. Liver cancer. So what is liver cancer? What is cancer? Cancer do, do, do cancerous tumors form um, out of the air by demons, or, or is your body actually forming that tumor to wall off toxins? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so cancer is an intelligent response by the body based on environmental stimuli. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, okay. Cirrhosis, this is damage to the liver. What damages the liver? Well, you've got, you're taking in poisonous stuff. It has to be filtered through the liver, and the liver is going to start to wall it off. And when you see a cirrhosed liver, it looks like this. It looks hard and nodule and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't feel good. It feels, and it's smaller, it's, it's just horrible looking. So what kind of stuff um, is negatively affecting everybody now? And I'm talking to everybody that goes, that, that has fast food or something else. Fructose, 100% of fructose is processed by the liver. This means you've got to take it in. Now, fructose can be broken down into stuff you can use, like glucose. Now, fructose is converted into fat that gets stored in your liver. Children with high abdominal fat are at risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Where does this come from? Is this genetic or environmental? These people are being poisoned. Okay, poisoned. Okay, one sugar we drink a day increases. I mean, if you look at high fructose corn syrup, and now it's genetically modified high fructose corn syrup, this is the number one source of calories for all of America. 
What kind of stuff will these people develop? Um, high blood pressure, insulin resistance. Okay, again, it's type 2 diabetes. Is that bad luck, bad genes, or poisoning? Okay, um, uric acid levels promotes metastasis, damages the kidneys. Of course it will. Okay, and it raises triglycerides, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, digestive disorders, kidney disease. Look at these, and this is because we're eating toxins. What, what are we talking about today? Spleen, kidney, liver, all the blood filters. Why are they having problems? Because they're being poisoned. Okay, glucose can be used by every cell in the body. Fructose can only be uh, metabolized by the liver. So fructose ends up damaging the liver the same way alcohol can, insulin resistance, everything else. Now, alcohol consumption, do you think, you know, the government um, and the government's responses to what's been going on the last two years has lowered alcohol consumption and improved gym memberships or no? So if you think they're after your health, oh God, I got some nudes for you. Okay, no, okay, they're not. I mean, they actually in Huntington Beach, they closed the beaches a couple of years ago. Why? Because sunlight and running around with your friends is bad for your health. Okay, so alcohol consumption is leading 25 to 30%. Okay, non-alcoholic liver disease is rising every year, currently 25%. By, by 2030, 50% of Americans are going to have it. This is a self-induced disease. Chemicals, endocrine-disrupting chemicals, and the plastic bottles, um, they're similar to sex hormones like estrogen, BPA, contributed fatty liver disease. This means plastic bottles. I mean, you know, when you're having, you know, a hard bottle like this, and this is what you fill multiple times a day, that works. It's reusable. It's better for the environment. Okay, Tylenol, a third of the Americans take acetaminophen. Why? Because the doctor recommends it. Who's he trained by? A pharmaceutical industry. Who do they fund? The government and the media. Anybody see the correlation there? Okay, and they're funding the education. So um, acetaminophen, what does this do for you? What's the benefit? Well, it depletes your body of glutathione, which protects the brain and protects the liver. It destroys proteoglycan production, which is the building block of cartilage. Uh, it's a leading cause of liver failure. Um, so, but it does have a side effect of making you temporarily feel better if you have joint pain. I, seriously, I mean, uh, uh, 50 years from now, they're gonna go, no, <laughs> no. Doctors weren't really doing that because they took an oath that said, first do no harm. Okay, kidney disease. Diabetes is the most leading cause of kidney failure. Why do we have dialysis centers everywhere? Let's look at this. Normal blood is on the bottom. Acutely stressed blood. When you're acutely stressed, you got that fight or flight system kicking in. You produce less stomach acid. The cells become less electrical negative and they start to clump together. When they start to clump together, they can't hold oxygen. Okay, and, and this is dangerous. This is why we tell people juicing, blending, plant-based diet so you get the right amino acids so that you can like build healthy cells. When you're incredibly stressed, they start to clump together and it's called roll of coin formation or rule of coin formation. We've got pretty big, beautiful cells floating around on the right. We've got cells that are starting to be stressed. We've got fiber formation. that's dangerous. And we do blood analysis on just about everyone. What if you see this? This is stacks of red blood. How do you think, remember Henley's loop or loop of Henley? Okay, that little functional unit of the nephron, cell, cell by cell it goes through there. Do you think that's gonna flow through there nice and smooth? No, this is what, this is what clotting, it's, it, blood doesn't clot in the arteries, it clumps in the arteries. Okay, this is extremely toxic. Now, what if you have type 2 diabetes, which is a blood poisoning, and you treat that with a toxic chemical that reduces blood glucose, but the insulin levels remain high? What does the British Medical Journal say? Well, um, <clears throat> more than a twofold increased risk of severe hypoglycemia, so it's lower in blood sugar, but also a 19% increase in mortality if you reduce it 9%. Now, glucose is something your whole body can use. 
okay, fructose is the only thing that only your liver can metabolize, and this thing lowers glucose, but still remains, insulin remains high. What about cholesterol? You've heard of good cholesterol and bad cholesterol? Well, this is the British Medical Journal. They say um, <laughs> uh, high LDL, which is considered the bad cholesterol, inversely associated with mortality in most people over 60. That means LDL, low density lipoprotein, which is a protein carrier for cholesterol. High density lipoprotein is also called, is a protein carrier, but it's called good cholesterol, LDL is bad. Only because LDL is elevated when you have tissue damage or hormone production issues. So people, when they're in a stress state, will have high LDL. And that's a normal response by the body because you need to make those hormones and you've got to repair the tissue. And it turns out this finding is inconsistent with the cholesterol hypothesis uh, that LDL is, is bad. Since elderly people with high LDL live as long or longer than those with low LDL, our analysis provides reason to question the validity of the cholesterol hypothesis. Here's another one, clinical pharmacology. Statins or cholesterol-lowering drugs stimulate hardening of the arteries and heart failure. Hmm. Thus, the epidemic of heart failure and hardening of their arteries that plagues the modern world may be paradoxically aggravated by the pervasive use of statin drugs. Isn't that interesting? So giving a chemical to alter your, your, your response to the environment is not good for you. Uh, clinical cardiology, decreased heart muscle function, increased placking of the arteries from the Journal of Atherosclerosis. Uh, statin drugs increase the risk of a statin second stroke. And all of this is based on your response to the environment. So if you have physical, chemical, or emotional stress, your body responds correctly. Okay, correctly, 100 times out of 100 or 100 times out of 100? Correctly. So when you go to a doctor, and I'm talking 50 years from now, okay, after you know, the people wake up and they take back the schools and the education. Okay, 50 years from now, people will understand, wow, you're either dehydrated, poor sleep patterns, you've got one bowel movement a day, which you should have two to three, um, you've got poor sleep patterns, so you're not regenerating at night, you have an elevation of blood pressure, cholesterol, and, um, and uh, blood sugar, okay, um, you are suffering from a stress response. So let's find out the physical, chemical, and emotional responses, okay, or, or stimuli that you're experiencing. Does that make sense? Uh, no. This runs in your family. I know. I treated your dad. Here's a diuretic. It'll help you. And to prevent it, here's a cholesterol-lowering drug. And in a few years, I'll diagnose you with atherosclerotic placking, but no problem because our entire hospital system is built on the clogged artery system. And we can do bypasses and stents and angioplasties till the cows come home to all the patients that we've given the cholesterol-lowering drugs to because they're going to need it because we're causing that hardening of the arteries. Dude. <laughs> is that weird or weird okay you know physical chemical emotional stress diagnose all three of those doctors when you're listening to this diagnose all three of those okay you identify the physical stress by digital static x-rays hrv surface electromyography signs bunions if you have a bunion it, that does not run in the family. It means compromised nerve supply to the foot. It means your gait is going to be a little off. That means the pelvis that houses half of the parasympathetic nervous system is going to be off. That means disc injuries in the low back. That means poor sleep patterns, difficult menstrual cycles. And this is looking at bunions. Okay, so you've got to identify the physical stressors, chemical stressors. You can see on the dark field microscopy, thermography, and ask the person, how'd you sleep last night? Oh, good, you know, I only got up about four times to pee. Okay, that's, that's chemical stressor if you're not sleeping. Emotional stress, okay? What TV programs do you, want, do you watch? Fox? Well, maybe. You watch C CNBC, ABC? Okay, yeah, you're in an incredibly stressed, emotional, unstable state. Do you read the Los Angeles Times? Okay, yes, you're incredibly emotionally unstable. Okay, did you vote? No, no, I won't say. <laughs> okay, so this is what you do. If you, if you have somebody with liver, kidney, or spleen issues, 
they've got to detox the pathway. You have respiration, perspiration, pooping and peeping. Okay, have them detox their system. Okay, you have them get their blood clean, fix the physical, chemical, emotional stress. So nasal diaphragmatic breathing. I just got rid of acid and a bunch of bacteria and a bunch of funguses and yeast and molds in my air. This is what breathing does. So diaphragmatic breathing alkalinizes the system. Perspiration, exercise and sauna. So if somebody has a kidney disorder or a liver disorder, is deep breathing and perspiration good for them? Yes, look at the advantages. I mean, they've been using infrared saunas since the you know Romans were drinking out of lead pipes. Thousands of years, okay. That's one of the things that brought them down. Urination, okay, how many people are properly hydrating? Okay, raw organic unfiltered apple juice is fantastic because the malic acid helps to dissolve certain kidney stones and it helps the liver. And you know, when I get people that are completely toxic and I get, tell them to just start drinking a liter to two liters of organic unfiltered apple juice, guess what happens? They get diarrhea. Thank goodness, that's the body, that's the body alkalinizing. Although, you know, when I tell them to do apples for cleaning the kidneys, carrots for cleaning the lungs, celery is good for minerals, and beets are good for cleaning the blood, but beets will scare you because it turns your poo and pee red. Yes, brother? Okay, yeah. It's really scary, you know, so you look, oh my God, oh no, I had the beets for lunch. Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, but it's detoxes the system and bowel movements two to three bowel movements a day. And you get people in here who, one a day if I'm lucky, you know? Mm -hmm. No, this is how you correct the problem. Vitamin E improves liver function. Omega-3 is fantastic, okay? Ginger, green tea, resveratrol, okay, bromelain. I mean, and, and when you look at this, ginger, green tea, um, healthy organic red wine or grape juice, pineapple, okay, spirulina, chlorella, cayenne cream, vitamin D. I mean, we're just talking basic stuff. The, the care and feeding of a human being is not that difficult, okay? The care and feeding of a human being in captivity, which is where we are, is not good. So you need proper nerve supply. You need regular exercise, why? Because you gotta move the lymph. We just described all of these blood filters inside of the gut. So when we talked about diaphragmatic breathing two weeks ago, and we talked about, oh my gosh, it helps with blood sugar, it helps with kidney function, it helps with digestion, it helps with this. No kidding. All of that is moving those organs around. It helps with everything. But people are like this all day long, so they're not gonna have you know, good digestion. So diaphragmatic breathing is gonna be important. Exercise, proper nutrition, this means if your great-grandparents wouldn't recognize what the heck you're putting in your mouth, neither does your system. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this genetically modified high fructose corn syrup. I think I'll store it in the liver. <laughs> okay, Sufficient rest. This is when you, you regenerate in prayer and meditation. So now, all of this stuff, now it's, it seems too simple. You know, when we're talking about liver cancer, liver disorders, lip pancreatic issues, duodenal ulcers, all of this stuff, I just want to bring into one blood filtration system, the spleen, the kidneys, and the liver. And you can see why we're having in our society such issues with them. And we can correct it. We can correct it. We are going into an area now that the Ministry of Truth would not approve and that would limit our exposure. I mean, eventually they're going to you know, I'll be in a FEMA camps on an overtone box cart explaining the same thing, you know, to, to people that will listen, okay? And I guess all the awakened people will be in the camps with me, so it'll be kind of cool. <laughs>